Welcome to Displacements Part 1. Alright, so open a new instance of Hammer and we're instantly going to set our grid size to 512 units. This is going to give us a nice large piece of land to work with. We then take our quad tool and this is going to draw us one single face at the size of 512 by 512. So once we have our faces, we can start displacing, right? Wrong. You cannot set a displacement on a face that has not been subdivided. At subdivision 1, we are given one vertice that we can affect. This is level 1. As you'll see, divides our face into four faces and puts a vertice in the middle. And that is why we end up with this shape. There's not much you can do at this level, but you know, if pyramids are your thing, then it works just fine. At subdivision 2, things get a little more interesting. We now have more faces, so we have more vertices, which means we have more angles that we can affect with our displacement tool. You can see this here, where we have three clearly protruding angles at different sections. But since this tool works based on vertices, it will help if you could see them. This is when you press F8, and this reveals the wire mode. This is a vertice, and these are the faces. This vertice is going to affect these faces. You can use the displacement tool accordingly, and any vertice that's within the radius of the tool will be affected at the strength that you have chosen. You can clearly see this being demonstrated here. At subdivision 3, things get pretty decent in terms of acceptability in the game world. With the right texture and the right levels of detail, you can achieve really good environments just by going to subdivision level 3. At subdivision level 4, things can get pretty wild. This is actually my favourite level of subdivision because you can achieve almost anything with the right level of detail and the right texturing. I mean, look at this phallus. Crazy. Again, using the wire mode, we can really understand how detailed you can go. We really start to enter the land of the shrubbery at this level of subdivisions. Bushes, shapes, mountains, anything you want can be perfectly sculpted. At level 5 is all you'll ever need. This is an Unreal Engine Deep, but it's plenty that you'll ever need. It's big on file size, as I'll show you it later, but man, is it smooth and is it satisfying. There is a problem when using displacements. Bigger subdivisions do equal bigger file sizes. I tested this, and when using subdivision 2 or subdivision 5 at the same strength on the same size, you clearly get bigger results. But I do have a solution for this. If we simplify all of these subdivisions down one level, then we can still maintain the shape that we were desiring. This is why I recommend using subdivision 5. You can be as detailed as you want and then simplify to get the result you need at the smallest file size possible. Now, this process isn't reversible and going down too large will make you lose the result that you wanted. Going from level 5 to 3 would be too extreme, but going down one level like 5 to 4, 3 to 2 would be just right. So here's a few tips when displacing. You instantly run into this problem where your faces aren't connecting. You need to use the edge tool and press M on each edge to merge them. But sometimes when you have a lot of faces, you can't see the edge you need. Selecting the faces you want to connect, pressing Ctrl H will isolate them. Then you should be able to see exactly which two edges that you want to combine. But remember, they must be parallel to one another. Some other things that you should know is if you have two faces of a different size and you try to merge the edges together then those edges are going to meet each other in the middle and they're going to stretch so that they can merge together. You're not always going to be working with squares and sometimes you'll end up with shapes like this.
Here's another tricky problem when merging. You have this big face that you want to merge to a smaller face. The first thing I would do is grab the big face and press Ctrl D. But you'll notice when you do that, the grid starts to go funny. This is because a hidden vertice is being created and it's your job to find it so that you can have two smooth, unconnected faces. You'll see if we press the face that has the weird webbing of the grid and press Ctrl H, go into vertice mode, we can find this vertice. Once we delete this, our subdivision should go back to normal. Simplifying the subdivision helps show this more clearly. As you can see, as soon as I delete the vertice, my subdivisions go back to normal. And now they are nice and even and ready to roll. But since this face was merged to other faces, deleting that vertice has affected the things it was connected to. This is when you really start pulling your hair out, but I do have a fail safe for this as well. So one thing you could do is using the backspace button to delete unnecessary faces which are making unnecessary edges which are making unnecessary vertices. You can see by using the backspace it has simplified my faces and removed the vertice. But these faces are still connected to one another and sometimes that can cause a problem. You can test if a face is detached by selecting the face in the free transform mode and simply moving it around. If it is disconnected from everything, you're good to go. But as you'll see here, when I thought everything was disconnected, that was disconnected, this was not. And I still won't be able to connect the edges until the vertices are clear and I've pressed N. So you think the problem solved here, but then watch what happens as I get to my next edge. I press merge and this is going on. Something is clearly wrong here. This is when a hidden vertice face edge has accidentally gotten involved. So this is my process when I run into these problems. It's important to understand this didn't happen for no reason. When mapping, sometimes a vertice edge or face will just be created when you didn't intend it to. So go back to the basics. Click the faces we want to merge. Control H to isolate. N to detach each face. And then we try merge them. If it works, it works. And keep doing this for all the other faces involved. So remember when I said things don't just happen for no reason. So that whole situation was actually caused because this face edge vertice was somehow created somewhere at some point and it was messing with everything. And when you find pieces of trouble like this, just delete them and your problem should be solved.